Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This time, I want to take on why dividend stocks may disappoint income investors. Everybody is looking for a way to generate income. There are some decent yields out there on equities, but I want to suggest that hunting those down may not be the most efficient and effective way to actually generate income once you get to a point where you need to either substitute for, let's say, a salary, and or you basically don't have an income from work anymore. So let's look at the scenarios in which you might want to supplement your income and why dividends may not be the best place to go hunting for it. So the background is what? Basically, managing your personal wealth follows two phases, you could argue. During the first, you're accumulating assets, saving, and during the second, you are using them up, deaccumulating. Now, it's the way that we deaccumulate that I'm going to focus a little bit of time on here. So what have we got? Many investors think a portfolio can be applied in one of two distinct ways. So it can generate a capital for bigger projects. So this is a kind of binary view some people have. Income is one thing, capital is another. And they view a portfolio that way, and they view the way they draw down on it that way too. Or it can generate income to supplement or replace an existing source. But what I'm going to suggest is there may be a route that combines the two when it comes to drawing down your wealth and perhaps generating an income where either you've got a reduced income and or you don't have another income because maybe you've retired from full-time work. Okay, so it's not binary. This thinking actually isn't helpful is what I'm saying. That rigid divide between income and capital. And that's because it leads people to view, view portfolio income as the only source of income. So what people tend to do is they say, right, all I'm going to draw down is the income I can generate from the portfolio. But if you're chasing yield and taking risk to do so or limiting your portfolio's exposure by doing so, that's where the danger comes in. A blended approach could work better. It's worth considering. All right, the exact blend will vary from person to person. So I'm suggesting you take some income in the form of dividends, but maybe you're also drawing systematically from the capital part of the portfolio too. Every person will be different. This is not a personal advice video. I'm just putting the idea out there. Now, what is the dividend puzzle that might lead you to do this anyway? Well, there is a thing called the dividend puzzle, and people have puzzled over it for donkey's years. What is it? Historically, investors have tended, depending on which study you read, but there have been some big influential ones, to attach a premium to dividend stocks. Why? Basically, in a perfect frictionless market, they shouldn't. So Montegliani and Miller, easy for me to say, study way back in the 1960s, said dividends shouldn't make any difference because all the firm is doing is generating wealth and then either paying it to you as a dividend or not. And if it doesn't, that wealth will be generated as a bigger capital gain. So in a world of no taxes, if you like, frictionless, it shouldn't matter to an investor whether a firm pays dividends or not. But it seems that it does. People like dividends. Why? And various theories have been put forward. Some of these quite common sense. You don't need to be an academic to understand these. So why? This is the dividend puzzle. Do people prefer dividend yielding stocks? Number one is the bird in hand hypothesis. In other words, rather than wait for capital gains, why not take a dividend, then your money's in the bank. People like that idea of jam today rather than waiting for jam tomorrow. Then there's the signalling theory. This is saying that managers who are confident they can pay consistent dividends are saying we're confident in how we run the business, how we manage our cash flows, and here's the reward. And thirdly, running through these quickly, the inefficient capital allocation risk. This is the idea that managers and shareholders are never quite aligned in terms of what they think money should be spent on. By giving shareholders regular dividends, you reduce the gap in terms of how they think cash flows should be applied. So the upshot is what, essentially? High yield stocks tend, or have tended, to be more expensive than perhaps they should be. They also tend to be mature, lower growth names. So by chasing yield, you are limiting what your portfolio can actually do for you in other respects, if you like. And there's therefore a per performance risk plus a tax risk. The tax risk being that by so focusing solely on income dividends, you're exposing yourself potentially to high rates of income tax and not using the capital gains tax allowance that would otherwise potentially be available. So the tax risk is what? Well, it's just that the dividend allowance has been reduced. So that's the amount you can earn tax-free from dividends from 5,000 to 2,000. Who knows what the current government will do next, but if it goes down any further, it suddenly doesn't act as much of a shield on dividend income. Meanwhile, you do have a use it or lose it capital gains tax allowance, £12,000 of 2019, 2020. So what I'm suggesting is maybe that's something you want to consider using if you can. 
And the danger, therefore, is that a high yield is not the most tax-effective solution in all cases. Another approach would be what? And this is just a suggestion. So, if you buy the argument that chasing high yield stocks puts you in a part of the market where you're overpaying for stocks and is crowded anyway, then let's say your target is 4% yield. Now, I've made that number up. It could be in pounds per year. Okay, one route would be to try to generate a 4% income yield. The traditional route would be to say that's all got to come from dividends on my portfolio. But actually, there may be a way to do it where 2% comes from that source and 2% comes from a steady drawdown of capital. It's all about trying to find the most effective long-term way to generate that 4%. Advantages would be what exactly? Well, I've hinted at one or two of them. You're not relying on a crowded trade for all your income. People have been chasing a relatively small number in the UK of high yield, secure, large stocks. Okay, and that is becoming an increasingly tricky place to find value. You may make better use of tax allowances. This is not a tax video per se, but that's worth bearing in mind the potential ability to use CGT allowances and your portfolio exposure can be more flexible. What do I mean by that? It means that your residual portfolio, if it's not concentrated on those high yield stocks, can invest in some of the, you know, the higher growth parts of the market that maybe don't offer dividends, but do offer capital appreciation. So this is the point. We're not necessarily running down the portfolio quicker. We're just running it down in a different way. Editor at Killick.com for any questions on that. It's a big topic. I've also done a guide on how to generate income in retirement. If you haven't seen that one, a Killick Explains guide. And also you've got Killick.com forward slash learn. And then down this side, tax effective saving.